Hey guys, welcome back to the MSR Workshop. So today we are going to talk about this bandsaw and what I had to fix. In my last video, I kind of hinted at something that I had to fix on this saw. Well, today I'm going to tell you. The reason this required a whole video is because I wanted to get into the explanation of why. So stick around and I'll tell you what happened. So the story goes like this. I got on and I ordered a Timberwolf bandsaw blade and I was specifically ordering a bimetal blade to do some resawing. Well, they sent me a blade in the mail and I got the blade and I put it on and the thing was wobbling side to side and not uh, performing like I wanted it to. It had a front to back movement, but it also had a side to side movement. So I got on the internet, did some looking around when they say your tires could be out of balance. And I looked at my tires and they were perfectly fine, or excuse me, my wheels. Um, the wheels were perfectly fine. The next place I looked is my tires. And that's where I found the problem. So starting off with, I looked at my tires and I took a, just a pencil or something, put them on my wheel and spun the wheel. And I was finding high and low spots on the tire. That got me thinking, and so I pushed on it with my finger, and of course, Paramedic's tires are crowned, which means they have an arc to them. Well, at the very edges, on the outer edges of the wheel, the compound on the tire, um, because it is a very hard compound, it was not seating properly. And so that was causing my blade to oscillate a little bit back and forth. So that let me down a rabbit hole, and I have since replaced the tires on my bandsaw. So the original tires on the Powermatic bandsaw were these tires. And one thing I found when I took the tires off is the urethane or whatever they use is extremely hard. I mean, these do not stretch at all. They are very, very rigid. They're almost like just a plastic. Um, and that got me thinking, these tires are so hard that they're not conforming to the crown of the wheel that they put on there. And then just looking over this, I found a just, you know, a few small imperfections in the, um, in the plastic. So I thought, well, let's take the tire off and throw a different brand of tire on there. So the first one that came to mind was Carter. Um, my local Woodcraft carries Carter tires, and on my Rikon saw that I previously had, it had rubber tires on it. Well, the rubber had started to get pitted just a little bit, and, you know, the saw was making just a little bit more vibration than I wanted to, so I wanted to try and see what the Carter tires did. So I threw a pair of Carter tires on there, and I really was impressed um, by how the saw ran. It ran a little bit quieter, ran a little bit smoother. So I'm like, hey, what have I got to lose? I'm gonna throw some Carter tires on there. If they do nothing, I can just take them back off and return them to the store, clean them off. You know, I'm not gonna be using them and just seeing how the blade tracks and I can pop these guys back on. So the Carter tires, I got a pair of Carter tires. So they are the same width. They're gonna be about an oh, inch and a half. So same uh, width of these, but they're a different thickness. And that's where I kind of ran into a problem. So these stock tires that came on the Powermatic are an eighth inch thick and an inch and a half wide. These guys here are a 332nd. Um, they're definitely a softer compound. And my thinking was, because I'm using a softer compound, one, if I have any imperfections in my blade, which one, I will tell you that the the Timberwolf blade that I got um, didn't have a very good weld. The weld was a little bit off and it wasn't perfectly flat and some more of my reading found out that the Timberwolf blades, unfortunately, this is not an uncommon problem. But I went ahead and threw these tires on anyways just to see how they did and threw another blade on and it was immensely better. And I was getting just a little bit of vibration in the saw originally with the other tires. And when you have a long blade and it goes around in a loop, when it comes off the bottom tire, if there's any imperfection, say if it's hitting that weld, it's not perfect, 
and it travels up over this long distance. This long distance is unsupported. So my thinking is, and you guys stick with me here guys, is that you have a little bit of vibration that starts at the bottom and as it travels up the top, that vibration gets a little bit more and a little bit more until it hits the tire and it stops it rapidly and throws it over the top and it does the same thing on the way down. So it's just like a ripple in a pond. It starts it and then it gets larger as it grows. Well, on this saw, because you have a 160 inch blade over a long area that's unsupported, if you have any imperfections, whether it be your tire or the bandsaw blade um, that you've put on there, those translate into vibrations, one in the blade and, and your cut, and also in the surface of the saw. Um, now one, thing to note is that's the advantage of having a heavy saw because that mass helps dampen those vibrations. So I was thinking that because if I threw a tire on there with a softer compound, any imperfections in the blade are going to be somewhat muted with a softer compound on a tire. And that will also help compensate for, you know, say a you know, there's a bad part in the weld. So I threw these on there and they worked immensely better. And I noticed that the vibration of my saw was virtually gone. Now the problem that I had next was because these are three thirty seconds of an inch thick, they're much, much thinner, the edge of my tire, these were below it. So if I were to ever throw on a really wide blade, I might run into the problem of the teeth hitting the edge here. I'm like, well, I can't do that. So it got me into some more searching. So next I came up with a tire called Blue Max and they're only sold on eBay. And I've heard a lot of good things about them. They're made here in the USA. They're not a China made thing. They've got their own compound, their own surface and they will custom cut any width. But the other big thing is they're one one eighth inch thick and that's the stock thickness for the tire that I was using. And one other thing to note first too, is these Carter tires, while they're a great compound, I was happy with the compound, the shiny surface was slightly tacky. And I found that it attracted dust terribly. And so putting it on this, using it only a couple times, this would pick up a lot of sawdust and shavings. Now that's going to end up back in the problem that I had before. Well, you're going to start getting shaving buildup on here that's running underneath your blade and that's going to turn into vibration again. So this blue max, and we'll look at it closely here in a minute, is what I put on the saw. It fits perfectly on the saw. Um, it looks like it was made for the saw. Um, the joints here was also a thing of concern. So on the Carter tires, these are where the urethane is bonded together to make the form of the tire. These aren't perfectly smooth either. I'm could be just overthinking this and being OCD about it. But if one, you have a little bit of a weld that's off and next you have a little bit of a joint here on your tire that's off. That's two things that are going to add up to potential vibration. These ones here are much, much smoother and also virtually, you know, not there. Now I will give you that, that the Powermatic tires, there is no discernible seam on these. So that's one good thing, whether these are made in a single batch and cut, or, you know, I'm not sure how they ended up making these. I don't think these are just a long band that they fuse together but the compound is just too ridiculously hard. So the Blue Max tires, they're made here in the USA. They've got their own compound and one, the surface is almost, if you look at it really closely, it's almost dimpled. And what that does is because it's almost a dimpled surface, it helps repel the dust. And I haven't found that I've had any problems with dust buildup or shaving buildup on the tire surface. And they claim that the surface that they use is strictly unique to their tires. Didn't have any problems getting any of these tires on or off. And the key to doing that 
is people take your take your wheel off. It's it's really simple. You have a single bolt. It slides right off. Then you can loop the bottom over, put a clamp on the side, and just do a pull up, and you've got your tires on. But the big thing is these fit perfectly. They're an eight inch thick, so I don't have a gap here. And you'll see in a picture that I threw up is these are stretched and it ends up leaving a little bit of a gap on the other side as well. Not just the ridge of the tire that didn't fit you know, flush with the top, but also there was a gap side to side. Even though these performed good, I needed something better. So I went with the Blue Max tires and I could not be happier. Um, I will throw up a link to their eBay site. So if you're interested, you can go there and they will pretty much make any tire for your saw. But I would suspect that these would be fantastic in different applications. More people use them for smaller saws than really large saws like this. Now, one other problem that I potentially think could be something in the future is depending on how firm or how not firm the compound is. Think of it as like a rubber band. If I was to fold a rubber band over, you know, say a dowel rod, and then take my fingers and push down, that rubber band is going to stretch. Well, if I have a big blade on a saw like this that I am pushing so hard at the top to tension that blade, it's going to stretch that um, more so over the wheel itself. And I could lead to premature tire failure because I'm overstretching this on the top here where it's just pulling it down. It's just mangling it. And that's where that extra thickness comes in that it really just kind of holds it all in there and I have some give in there as well. See this, this is a, a shot of the surface of these Blue Max tires. They're not shiny and I'm trying to zoom in here so you guys can look at the surface. It's almost like a dimpled surface, just a little bit. So it really does help repel any of the dust. that these saws get on the tires. You can also see that this is a perfect flush. I don't have any gap there whatsoever. And they even sent a little installation tool to help you even the stretch all the way around the tire. So the last thing I'm gonna do is gonna require me to do a little drawing to explain. So hopefully you can bear with me and um, understand what I'm drawing here. Okay, let's zoom in here just a little bit. So imagine this being the side profile of your tire. These are the edges of the wheel. This is the crown that is built into most band saws these days. Now, if your band saw has a, a flat wheel, then ignore this section. But if your band saw has a crowned wheel, the compound that's usually put over the top mimics that crown and so you end up having a crowned bandsaw wheel. Well, one thing also to pay attention to is that if you have a large tire, say like mine, the material, it's important to stick with the stock thickness of material. And why is that? Because if I have an arc and I'm using a thin material, that arc is going to be very dramatic, just like the original one. Now what that does, if I have a bandsaw blade on here where I'm following the snodgrass method, where I'm putting the deepest part of my gullet at the center of the tire, the back half of the blade is not supported. Well, that's okay but because you have such a dramatic arc because you're using a thin bandsaw tire material, say like the Carter, not very much of it is supported right there. 
Now starting over, same arc, but this time I'm using a thick material. That arc is not going to be as dramatic because I'm using a much thicker material. And so when I put my bandsaw blade on the crown here, a lot more of the blade is supported even though I'm still setting my blade in the center of the tire. A larger portion of that blade is still going to be supported. So there's going to be very little of the blade that's just flapping around in the wind. What does that mean? Well, you're going to get a bigger supported blade. So that's my blade right there. This section may now be supported instead of a blade where only this little bit of a section is supported. So that's going to make it track better and just overall do a better job. The other thing to pay attention to is when you are balancing your blade on the center here, it's going to kick this blade one direction or the other. Most likely it's going to kick it down. So when you go to align up your guides, you're going to look down, say imagine you've got a guide here and a guide here. Your blade is going to be off just a little bit. Now this is just for dramatic effect. You're not going to be able to line them up perfectly, whether if I had a guide here and a guide here and my blade was running down the middle, then I can evenly space them front to back on both sides. If I balance it like here and it kicks it down, I'm only going to be able to get my guide up to the top here and maybe be able to move it in this side here. So my guides are going to look off. Hope that made sense to you guys. I know it's a bunch of scribbling. But the moral of the story is when you replace your bandsaw tires, try to stick with the same thickness of tire material if your bandsaw wheel is crowned. Now if it's flat, it's a whole different story. But if it's crowned, you'll want to try and stick with the same thickness of material because if you do a thinner material, that crown is going to be much more dramatic than it was with the original material there. Well guys, I hope that was helpful for you and I just didn't ramble on forever and didn't make a bunch of sense. But I'm really happy with the tires that I've got on here now. I wish Powermatic's compound wasn't so freaking hard because I feel like because it's so hard, it's just like running your car. If any of you have run low profile tires, your ride is a lot harder on the ground and you're feeling every vibration transferred up into your car. Whereas if you run a thick tire or even run a lower pressure tire, say if you're going off-roading, you drop your pressure back down then go right on the freeway, you're gonna notice that your ride is much cushier than it was if you pumped it up to like 40 PSI and you had a rock hard tire. Anyways guys, if I left something out or if you have a question about my process, be sure and leave a comment below and hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks.